The year 2020 has been anything but predictable. Shopping at the grocery store, working from home, and homeschooling the kids? This way of living has taken some real adjusting. Oh, the quarantine life. Y'all, it's different. Um, if I haven't talked to y'all before about it, um, the world... <laughs> uh oh! Huh. Can't do that video? in the world no Wanna more. Start a new video. No, we gonna leave it. It's different, different. Like in the beginning, <laughs> to be honest, I thought it was like a free vacation. I'm like, oh what? I get to be at home with my family. Like they're my favorite people anyway. So I'm like, cool. I get to be at the crib. Uh, ain't nobody expecting nothing from me. So this is gonna be lady. Showing that like six feet apart, six feet apart. Don't even get any more closer. I'm like, wow, this is going way too far. This, it happened so suddenly. And like the fact that like we're not going to school anymore. I mean, it's cool and all, but I mean, like I said, my teacher and my friends. We've just shifted things. Our kids still go to school. They just go to school at a different hour. We was used to our kids going to school at seven, eight in the morning. Now our kids go to school at two and three in the afternoon. Ain't Which no is hey, ridiculous. There's no problem with that. There's, it's only ridiculous if another household said we was going to school at 7 a.m. Guess what, y'all? <laughs> but the thing is, if we're going we, to school. It would be different if they start school at 2 o'clock and we've devoted ourselves to help them through school from 2 to 7. What do you do when they start school at 2 o'clock, Tony? What's going on with you? I'm working. But the whole thing is. So who well, helping them do the work? Shh, hold on, hold on, baby, you yelling. The whole thing is my wife's a teacher. She ain't went to work in 42 days. Did hold on, I hold on. I was, a, I was about a, the added pressure. She hasn't gone pressure. to work in 42 days. For real. So for FaceTime from halfway up ain't real work. But they got my whole brain, though. They got this whole mouth, though. They got all this energy, though. Do you they even got show your focus. face? Do you even show your face sometime, on FaceTime? Sometimes. Who? Okay, listen. I'm focused. First of all, they see you never, face me to first be of all, you never could go to work. And say, oh, no, 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 I'm not showing my face today, or I'm not going to let you hear my voice. I'm here, but the door is closed and my voice is off. Now proceed. <laughs> that ain't work. Okay. That's so what her job. Wait, wait, I'm in quarantine, too. Right. Jesus wants me to rest, too. No, no, no. Jesus, you don't know my prayer life. Jesus. You don't know my prayer life. He told me he want me to rest. So I need for everybody to fall. Everybody's in rest ain't the same rest fall in this in quarantine. Now look, everybody doing Instagram videos. People are like, yo, I want everybody to know in that, that in this season, in that you don't have to overwork. You got other people like, yo, it's quarantine. God gave you the time to be able to create, create. Everybody got something different to say. My thing is between her. Man, she got to teach these kids, man. Ain't nobody want to hear. Let me tell you, famous words of a janitor that my wife knows. He said, what make you think your hands so good that you can't get that trash? She said, because I went to school to be a teacher. He said, I don't give a <laughs> So, to put that in our life, I didn't go to school to be no damn teacher. She did. <laughs> she oh, did. God. School said. What did Jesus tell you? My God. Jesus. What's your portion in this season? Because these are his kids okay. too. You'll, okay. you'll hear about this. His children. I don't know what episode He's this will be on. Kid. I don't know what He's episode. He's the one that know how to do all the stuff. Okay. And me and my son. Me and my son built a whole city that he had to do for his school. No, she said out of her mouth that my husband, he's been cooking. Because okay. that's something I've been doing. While you're teaching, I'm cooking. Also, I'm not done. Hold on, I'm not done. I'm not Do done. I'm not done. Cook. Hold on. Do it oh, take the whole when I'm day done cook. cooking, I'm smashing. I'm smashing. Hey, quarantine bodies is real deal. I can't wait for the gyms to open. Not like... Why? What you about to do? Who? Play basketball? Oh, okay. Because kind of you ain't working out. I'm saying you like, I can't wait for the gym. Is you you can't wait for the basketball court to open. So you That's play working basketball. out. Basketball is one of the... Because he don't work out ba at all. The Not kind even of this shit. Look, what are you saying? Basketball. First of all, look at my body. On the other side over there, I know y'all may be looking and like, this nigga is sharp. <laughs> like, my body structure is sharp. I know, that's right. Um, over the last couple years, you I probably gained... Calm down, because if you stand up, 
Everybody would know you have a church body on the lower half. Okay, and that's you have I mean. a dancer body on top, church body on you the bottom. You don't want me to stand up. You're not gonna stand up. You. I have gotten so many challenges. They like nailer, nailer. Let's do this push up challenge, my guy. We do push ups when we wake up. We do push up. I ain't pushed up nothing but a push up pop. <laughs> I've I've done a push up pop. <laughs> Getting the kids to complete their schoolwork and controlling our diets is one thing, but managing the high emotions that quarantine life can bring is another. We haven't been like doing much as we normally do. Is I'm starting to get like a little lazy sometimes, and I try not to, but I do. Yeah. So like I'm like, yeah, I'm almost up like. Yeah, most of like, I don't really speak up. And then with frustration, I think like, things just start taking me off a lot more easy, easily. It's so, like, if a rat would like do something annoying, like I'll like get super frustrated. And, yeah. Like quick, yeah. do you know why that's happening or do you have an idea of why that's happening? I just think that like, and then, no offense to you, Raya, but like, I've just been in the house with Raya a lot lately. Mm -hmm. It's just that, like, every time, like, something annoying happens, it just, I guess it just kind of, not stays with me, but, like, I got stays with me, yeah. Mm -hmm. It stays with me, and it just gets really frustrating. Sometimes I just can't do it anymore. I'm just like, okay, you're right, volume, and I just leave. Like, something else trying to start an argument, and I'll get mad at her, and then, yeah. Okay, that's good, Though we've tried to make the best of this time together, we've also had to discuss some harsh realities. It's opportunities to show how much you've grown. Absolutely. That's literally it. And so me and mom have gotten pulled over by police. Hmm. I've gotten into conversations, situations with white people, black people, it don't matter. But in all those situations, I operate with no chip and I always operate in expectancy of that person, even if they were racist, or even if they were this or that, I'm expecting for God to be able to come into the situation. So the thing is, you, I, I expect for everybody to operate in, in, in God's way, but- You gotta use wisdom. But you gotta use your wisdom. And my expectancy for people to be good does not mean, because when I'm expecting somebody to be good, you know what that does for me though? When I expect somebody to be good, I approach them with good energy. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you see, but if you're doubting people to be bad people, then you're also approaching them with shady energy. Yeah. So they don't, they don't know you. Yeah. But you're walking up to them like, nigga, I don't trust you. So why should the other Everybody person be on, on the defense? That? They on the defense. So I approach the situation like you should be one of God's people because I be trusting that even though the enemy is out here trying to slide in these situations. I believe that God is approaching me at all times. Even if you are innocent in any type of situation, there's always going to be one person like, oh, he definitely doesn't be God. And in Jesus' standpoint, he, uh, quote unquote, or other people said, quote unquote, he is saying it's blasphemy because he's saying that he is God's son, right? So what I'm trying to make a connection here is that when they when they had a choice to let him go crucify no crucify Jesus or crucify the, the murderer right they said Jesus just because he was blasphemy he is a cold blooded killer right it doesn't matter but Jesus still took it like a G right in black people's standpoint he was an innocent bystander just walking, no, jogging, right? They automatically thought he did something wrong because he was by a person, but not even a constructed house. He was just, he came out of a building and he went jogging. So they're automatically thinking, hmm, he must have stole something out of that house and now he's jogging, trying to get away back to his house, right? In my opinion, I don't, I don't care if the white person is so alive. I actually want the black people to actually have a chance to live. Even if, 
even if the people are still are, are still convicted of doing burglary or anything, I still think the black person needs a chance. from natural causes. I don't want a white person to choose when a black person gets to live or die. I just, I just don't think it's fair at all. So that's all I have to say. A white person can go inside of a church. Kill every single person inside of it. And he gets to actually live, but he gets to go to jail. A black person doesn't even get the chance to speak in the situation. He automatically is convicted of some type of crime. And I just think white people need to learn that not all black people are bad. It's like they automatically think they did something wrong. It's just like, it's just not fair, man.